gather together, praising our God, celebrating the Eucharist together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As Hello, Church. Glad to be with you as we gather celebrating the Eucharist. We uh, hear Jesus in the Gospel from Matthew this day tell us to love God with all of our heart, with all of our strength, with all of our soul, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. That's a great challenge. But Jesus gives us strength through the Holy Spirit to do that. And so as we gather, preparing ourselves to hear the Word of God, on this Sunday, let us just pause and place ourselves humbly, quietly, in the presence of our God, asking for forgiveness for the times that we have not loved our God, and we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. Lord Jesus, you are our covenant with the Father and with one another, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to preach the good news to the poor. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our teacher in loving God and our neighbor. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us. Forgive us of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien. For you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow 
or orphan. If you ever wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else is he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all of the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The Word of the Lord.
My brothers and my sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested Jesus by asking, Teacher, which commandment of the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Being an election year, this fall, some folks have placed signs on their lawns showing their support for a particular political candidate. As I was driving this past Monday, one sign in particular caught my attention. You may have seen this political, or it's not a political sign, you may have seen this sign in your travels also. The sign is white in the background, and in the color red, the name Jesus was printed down the sign. On the top of the sign, in blue numbers, was the year 2020, and in the middle of the sign, in black lettering, surrounded by quotes, it read, love one another. Today, the Word of God challenges you and me first to consider what is the essence of this love that Jesus speaks of, and second, to answer the question, at least raise the question, am I loving others in the way that Jesus has taught me by his teaching and by the example of his life. Let's see what the Word of God can teach us about true love. From the book of Exodus, we find that the Jewish people are in the desert, having been freed by God from being slaves in Egypt. God has made a covenant with them. The basis of the covenant is God says to the Israelites, to the Jewish people, I will be your God, and you shall be my people. That's the covenant God has set forth. And now, God is setting forth the requirements which the Jewish people will need to fulfill to keep their part of the covenant. Chief among them is a concern for the vulnerable, especially for aliens, non-Israelites living on Jewish land, and for widows and for orphans, orphans being children who do not have a father. Without an adult male Israelite to defend them, widows and orphans were very vulnerable to suffering injustice and outright fraud. The poor were also subject to manipulation and fraud. In the land of Israel, God desires to see a just and compassionate society created which will ensure that the defenseless, whoever they may be, are protected. In today's Gospel, the Pharisees sent the scholar of the Mosaic Law to question Jesus. The question is a simple question, 
but a very important question. Teacher, which commandment of the law is the greatest? This is not a trick question, but is designed to see if the preacher, this preacher from Galilee, has the knowledge necessary to be teaching others about God and about God's will for them in their lives. In answering the question, Jesus answers by quoting the Jewish Testament, what you and I would call the Old Testament. He quotes first from Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength. And then from the book of Leviticus, Jesus says, you must love your neighbor as yourself. It is interesting to note that the second commandment is like the first commandment in that both commandments command love in the biblical sense. Love not as an emotion, like I feel like loving you today, but as a decision to love God and to love one's neighbor. To love God means a devoted and wholehearted commitment on our part. And to love our neighbor means a commitment to their good, to the neighbor's good, and seeking to help the neighbor when he or she needs our help. Jesus ends by saying this, the whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. Scripture scholars say basically what Jesus says, the whole law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. In essence, Jesus is saying, no other commandment of the Bible is properly observed if either one of these commandments is compromised. For the aim of all of divine scripture is to bring us out of ourselves and to love and serve God and to love our neighbor. To say the least, this is a challenging time in which we are living. Some people, some folks are anxious. Other folks are battling depression. Other folks are facing financial hardships, just hoping to make it through another week, somehow to find the funds to pay an electricity bill, to put food on the table for their children. In this time, in this time, Jesus calls upon us to love God and to love our neighbor. Some practical applications of loving our neighbor. Last weekend, when Father Peter Lyons, the Franciscan who was with us, he said in his homily that maybe when we stand before St. Peter at the gates, the pearly gates of heaven, it would be good that we have a letter of commendation from the poor, saying, in effect, this person has helped me has stood with the poor in times of need, in times of trial. If right now you're not facing financial trials, my suggestion to you and to myself is that we share some of God's blessings, some of our money, with those who are in need, those who are maybe facing desperate situations, that we truly reach out to our neighbor and help our neighbor. As we all know, we're days away, a little more than a week away from election. And sometimes our rhetoric can get very heated. And we might say to the other person, 
who's not voting for the candidate that we are voting for. Some things that Jesus would say are not very Christian. Bottom line is, hopefully, you and I don't yell at our neighbor in anger because our neighbor is voting for another candidate, a candidate that we're not voting for. That person is still our neighbor and is deserving of our respect, of our care, and of our love. One of the requirements to vote in a federal election in the United States is, is at least this, one requirement, to be at least 18 years of age. In teaching us in the gospel this day, to love God and to love our neighbor. Jesus has no such requirement. Jesus invites the 16-year-old, the 14-year-old, the 17-year-old, and all of us above that age to love. No one is exempted from loving. God and neighbor. Remember that sign I told you about that I saw on Monday on the left side of the sign, going down the sign, was printed in red. J E S U S, the name Jesus. And across the top were the numbers 2020. And in the body of the left of the sign, in quotations, was the words love one another. Jesus' teaching to love God and our neighbor is as true as, or as true in 2020, as it was when he first spoke those words over 2,000 years ago. And gathered together in prayer, let us now bring before our loving God our needs, the needs of the greater church, the needs of our respective families, the needs of the people of God. Let our response to each intercessory prayer be, Lord, hear our prayer. For God's holy church, as we proclaim Christ to the world, by our love for each other and our neighbors, we pray to the Lord. That citizens of the world look out for and support one another, caring especially for refugees and immigrants, we pray to the Lord. For those who are orphaned and widowed, and for all who are in need of compassion and love, we pray to the Lord. May the Holy Spirit reveal to each of us how we are called to use our gifts in sharing the gospel of life and joy. We pray to the Lord. For the safety of our fellow Americans who have volunteered to protect us through their service in the United States military, and for our country's first responders, for all the essential workers responding to the coronavirus pandemic, 
for our fellow citizens who service in our intelligence agencies and embassies around the world, and for their families, we pray to the Lord. For all who are being cared for in hospitals this weekend, and for all who are ill at this time, especially for those suffering from the COVID-19 disease, and all those included within our parish prayer list. For all those who are grieving the deaths of loved ones, may they find healing and strength from the risen Lord. And we commend to God all those who have died, especially for Thomas Dudek, the husband of Andrea Dudek. We pray to the Lord. For Sister Mary Toronto, for whose intention this Mass is being celebrated, for our Sister Parish of Immaculate Conception in Villard, Haiti, for the intentions inscribed within our parish book of prayer, and for the intentions we now pray for in silence. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, in your great love for us, we ask you to answer our prayers according to your will, and may the teaching of your Son and the guidance of your Holy Spirit help us to love you with all of our hearts and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And together, let us profess our faith, the faith that we have been baptized, the faith that we seek to live out each and every day. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this bread to offer, which the earth has given, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you also, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, who will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. I invite you, my brothers and sisters, to pray with me now that our sacrifice may be found acceptable by God, our Almighty Father. Lord God, look, we pray, on the offerings we together make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through christ our lord amen the lord be with you lift up your hearts together let us give thanks to the lord our god it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord God, with all of your angels and saints, we too give you thanks as we praise you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice filled with wine, and once more, having given you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from me. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Together, I invite you to pray with me now the prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yes, Lord God, deliver us, we pray, from every evil, graciously granting peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the second coming of Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, after you were raised by the power and the glory of the Father from the dead, you stood before your apostles and you said to them, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Lord Jesus, look not upon our sins, but gaze with love upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And let us now share some greeting for the Lord's peace with one another.
my brothers, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Last of the day, you are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, please join me in the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, 
May your sacraments, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements to share with you for the good of our parish community. I would invite you to please uh, read our, my pastor's note in our electronic bulletin. Uh, there's information there about uh, fundraising effort to raise funds so that the driveway uh, the, the, uh, to the Greater Urbana Food Bank may be paid. Right now it's a rapid driveway. It's filled with many potholes. We would ask you to read that. If you have any questions, contact me. Uh, but we're hopefully going to work together with others in the community to pave that driveway uh, so that people's cars and vehicles will not be damaged in delivering the food to the pantry or Picking up food. I thank you for your consideration. Also, if anyone would like to uh, have a pastoral visit from me as your pastor, just give me a call or email me, text me. I'd be very glad to come visit you um, and to share Holy Communion with you. Also, if anyone would like to celebrate the sacrament of uh, reconciliation, I'd, uh, just give me a call. Right now, we're celebrating the sacrament. It's scheduled after the 5.30 vigil mass on Saturdays, but any time or other days of the week, I'm uh, very open to celebrating the sacrament with you. I hope that you have a good, peaceful, and restful Sabbath day. Please pray for your staff. Please pray for me as your pastor, as your staff keeps you in our prayer. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. My name is Jessica Temple and I'm excited to share that I have been hired as the new youth minister here at St. Ignatius. Many of you know me and for those who don't, I look forward to working with you. My husband Jason and my two boys Kent and Beau have been living here in Frederick for the past nine years, but my roots run deep here at St. Ignatius. I've been a member at our parish for 33 years. 
I had my first communion at the country church and was one of the first confirmation classes in the new Iamsville church. Before taking this position, I had been working in the faith formation office for seven years. When I was a teen, we had a very vibrant youth ministry program. I want that for our teens today. My goal is to make faith formation classes something that the teens want to go to and participate in, that they want to know God's love and that they desire to follow him. I am blessed to be given this opportunity to help guide the teens in our parish forward on their journey ahead. Blessings.